So you want to move to Brazil to get a taste of that sweet low cost of living and cheap rent. Well, think again. Brazil has the highest number of international homicides in the world. It's got subpar healthcare, and let's not even get started on how bad the weather can get. Now, I don't mean to scare you. Brazil's great for a short stay, but not for permanent residents. So let's give you the full story and take a deeper look into why you should never move to Brazil. Climate. They say Brazil is a paradise with a constant 27 degrees all year round. But if something is too good to be true, it usually is. If you find yourself in the interior or inland area of Brazil, far away from the coasts, expect a lot of sun. Sunlight around the tropics is extremely harsh. You'll find people using umbrellas just to shield themselves from the scorching sun. So you might have to pack a ton of sunscreen in order to tolerate it. There is no shortage of rain in Brazil either. Places like Belém experience a lot of rain all year round. So that might limit your opportunities to go outside and enjoy the weather. But of course, the weather isn't the same everywhere. In Florianopolis, it's a whole different story. Not too warm or sunny with enough rain to keep the countryside lush and green. Cultural and Structural Shock The Brazilian experience can be a sort of cultural shock, especially for Westerners. And I'm not just talking about the culture either. There are structural differences here that'll leave people confused, like legal, governmental, and even behavioral. Prices are not given up front. You won't find clear numbers plastered anywhere. Instead, it's a game of hidden costs and surprise fees that you only unravel after the deal's done. Laws appear and vanish instantly, with no notice of where they came from or when they're going to be abolished. There is convoluted bureaucracy, a tax system that's a maze, and a strange sense of urgency from public offices. Security Now, I can't talk about Brazil without addressing the elephant in the room. Security. Brazil has a reputation of being an insecure place, but there are a few key things to remember. Brazil isn't just a dot on the map. It's sprawling and complex, and safety varies from place to place, even within the same city. Now, if you're heading south, you're on the safer side. Places like Florianopolis and Sao Paulo are pretty calm for explorers. Up north, well, that's where things might raise an eyebrow. Cities like Fortaleza and Salvador have a reputation for being unsafe. Gangs and violence pop up on the radar, but even then, these spots are still hot tourist hubs. One place I would not recommend going to is Feira de Santana. It's ranked as the most dangerous city in Brazil and ninth worldwide. In 2020, they counted 418 homicides, roughly 67.46 per 100,000 citizens. But let's take a look at the bright side of Sao Paulo. It's the safest place to live in the country. There's a state and a city by that name. The city is the state's capital, and trust me, its countryside is polished and safe. And if you're looking for work, then cities like Ribeiro Preto and Jundiaí are great because they're just a stone's throw from Brazil's economic hub. A comfy city apartment in a safe neighborhood of Sao Paulo is the same price as a cozy countryside house. Plus, there's even clean air and more safety. Inconsistent state standards. What I mean by this is that city infrastructure, amenities, and services will vary from place to place. The standards adopted by one state aren't uniformly adopted by others most of the time. Brazil is a big country with 27 states and 5,570 municipalities. Each one has its own unique administrative, political, and socioeconomic characteristics. As such, you can expect the level of development to vary greatly per state. For example, in 2021, the state of Sao Paulo had a human development index of 0.806, while the state of Maranhão had 0.676. I won't bore you with the numbers, but factors such as the education index, longevity index, and the measures of income inequality all vary across the states just like this. So you really want to pay attention to which part of Brazil you want to go to. And the level of development is going to affect your daily life. The traffic and highway in Tocantins can be really bad, 
But in Sao Paulo, you'll find some top-notch toll-based roads. It's pretty far away. Whether you're from Europe or North America, the geographical separation means you'll either be forking out a substantial amount for those airline tickets or coming to terms with less frequent visits back home. For those situated in Europe, it's essential to note that only a handful of major cities, mainly in Western Europe, offer direct flight connections to Brazil. These flights generally take off from Sao Paulo or Rio de Janeiro. Now, if you're residing outside these urban hubs, brace yourself for the likelihood of needing an additional domestic flights or even a bus ride. And speaking of Brazil's roads, except for a few states like Sao Paulo, the road conditions aren't exactly ideal, making bus journeys a bit more challenging. Now, Americans do have a bit of an advantage here. The prices for flights from Brazil to the USA tend to be more budget-friendly compared to flights bound for Europe. Healthcare Brazil boasts a universal healthcare system, known as SUS. However, its quality often falls short when compared to international standards. While Brazil offers a free and all-encompassing healthcare system, depending on your location, it might carry additional risks, particularly if you're not in cities with high-caliber public medical schools. In comparison to renowned systems like the British NHS, Brazil's public healthcare system, understandably, lags behind due to economic disparities. For newcomers to Brazil, numerous healthcare insurance providers are available. Seek one with solid local coverage and positive reviews. But on a bright side, private hospitals in Brazil often meet world-class standards. Private healthcare services in metropolitan areas such as Sao Paulo or cities with esteemed medical universities like Ribeirão Preto are top-notch. In fact, Sao Paulo alone boasts two hospitals among the world's top 100. But it's pretty costly, at least for locals. They often talk about the cost of private healthcare, especially considering the domestic landscape. But if you compare it globally, then they are on the lower end of the spectrum. For instance, giving birth at the esteemed hospital Albert Einstein, ranked 38th globally, costs less than $4,000, in contrast to $32,000 estimated by the Mayo Clinic. And while we're talking about the plus sides, let's take a deeper dive into them. Plus sides of moving to Brazil See, the Brazilian economic landscape has its frequent ups and downs, something locals often refer to as chicken flights. This economic roller coaster has its pros and cons. On one hand, it's crucial to build a safety net with low risk options like saving in dollars and a diversified investment mix to weather the storm. Multiple income sources help too. However, not everyone can cushion themselves from the economic jolts that happen every now and then. And here's where a silver lining emerges. After each economic turbulence, those who endure have a shot at snapping up quality real estate, assets, and even companies at favorable prices. Also, the exchange rate plays its part. The hail's dip against the dollar has actually made living in Brazil more affordable for Americans. Especially in the past couple of decades, Brazil's financial twists and turns have created a unique window of opportunity for those earning in foreign currencies, and it's all thanks to the constantly changing exchange rates. Over the last 10 years, the Brazilian real saw a significant 70% drop in its value. This shift brought some eye-catching deals, such as snagging beachfront apartments in top-notch state capitals for less than $500 a month. Now, despite this devaluation, it's important to note that Brazil isn't the most budget-friendly option in South America. Nonetheless, the exchange rate, combined with the steady decline of the Brazilian currency, opens up a unique opportunity. Those who can work remotely, earning in foreign currencies, might find a sweet spot here. While jetting off to new lands can be thrilling, it's not always a breeze to secure a working visa elsewhere. In some cases, you might end up firing off your resume to numerous companies waiting for that one lucky break. However, the change arrived in January of 2022. Brazil revamped its visa regulations to draw more digital nomads in, offering a potential shortcut for those keen on settling in this country. Brazil has been opening its doors to remote professionals with a one-year visa offer. If you're working remotely and want to base yourself in Brazil, this could be for you. Another pro for Brazil is that the country's devalued currency offers affordable beach houses. 
For remote workers and retirees hunting for a seaside abode, Brazil's got some interesting options. Santa Catarina emerges as a top favorite. So thanks to that favorable exchange rate, along with simplified real estate procedures, Brazil is gaining traction as a haven for those seeking warmth during the northern winter. The trend of foreigners snapping up beachfront properties gained traction after the 2014 World Cup, with prices that still make sense and an array of excellent opportunities. Investing in a beach house in Brazil is a smart move for those in pursuit of sunnier climates, affordable real estate, and a straightforward route to property ownership. Brazil has established itself as a sought-after summer haven, prompting higher flight costs from Europe during the season when most Europeans escape the chilly winter. So if beach life tickles your fancy, don't miss out on Praia de Cedro in Ubatuba. The beauty of purchasing a Brazilian beach house lies in its flexibility. You can jet off to it whenever it pleases you without breaking the bank. Surprisingly, for Londoners, buying a Brazilian beach house often costs less than renting an apartment in London for the same period. This strategy isn't just for sun seekers. Retirees and pensioners find it appealing too. And it's not just property that offers value. Even basic services like water and waste disposal can astonish people with how pocket-friendly they are in Brazil. So, should you move to Brazil? It's not recommended as a permanent place of residence, but it might work for digital nomads. So, if you're earning in dollars or euros and considering a place in Florianopolis, then it might be worth a visit. So, what do you guys think about moving to Brazil? Yay or nay? Let me know in the comments down below and subscribe for more content. See you next time.